what was perceived as modern art in colonial Korea. In this lecture, I will focus on the self-portraits of an early 20th century Korean artist to elucidate the advent of modern art in Korea. Go Hidong is considered the first modern Korean artist. You already examined uh, one of his self-portraits in preparation for the blogorama activity. Go came from a prominent family of court translators and interpreters. He studied at the Tokyo School of Fine Arts in the early 1910s, then returned to Korea and founded the Calligraphy and Painting Association, Sowa Hyopwe in Korean. And that was in 1918. This association was the first professional artist group in Korea. Go also organized the first public exhibition, the first public art exhibitions in Korea. So in many respects, he can be considered a pioneer of modern Korean art. Let's get to his paintings. What was modern about his paintings? They were considered modern because of the medium. Go Hidong painted in oil. Oil painting in Korea became one of the emblematic visual indicators of modernity. Oil painting was a new medium of expression. Traditionally, artists would have painted with ink on silk or paper. This shift from ink on paper or silk to oil on canvas is considered by art historians as pivotal in ushering Korean painting into the period of modernism. His paintings were also considered modern because of the subject. Go painted self-portraits. Traditionally, portraiture was strictly reserved for kings, prominent members of the court, and esteemed scholars and monks at a higher age, usually in their 60s or 70s. The majority of these portraits were traditionally used as commemorative objects in the ancestral ceremony. Go Hidong's self-portraits are modern visual expressions that assert the centrality of the artist as a subject worthy of depiction. What else was modern? His paintings were also modern because of their style. When the first Korean painters such as Go Hidong and others studied at the Tokyo School of Fine Arts, the style of academic impressionism taught by Kuroda Seiki and others was en vogue in Japan. This style, academic impressionism, remained influential in Korea throughout the colonial period, that is until 1945. So these are the three elements of the first modern Korean paintings. They were all painted in oil on canvas. They had unusual topics such as um, a self-portrait of an artist. And they were all painted in the style of impressionism. I would like to remind you that there exists a big difference between European Impressionism that you might be familiar with and Korean or Japanese Impressionism. Impressionism in France does not equal the sort of Impressionism in East Asia. In Europe, Impressionism started in the 1870s as a radical break with, with tradition in terms of color and composition. When Impressionism reached Japan in the 1890s and Korea in the late 1910s, it lacked the French social and cultural context. It was seen as a modern painting style like so many other styles. Koreans who looked at Impressionist paintings thought that this was the standard painting style in the West. For them, Impressionist style and the new medium of oil painting implied the conventions and aesthetics of Western painting. Let us examine Go's graduation work at the Tokyo School of Fine Arts, which was painted in, 19, in early 1915. The picture shows a young, smooth-faced man dressed in a royal blue jacket fastened with two streamers at the chest. On his head rests an elaborate, multi-crested, black horsehair head of the type worn traditionally in the Joseon period by scholars at home. 
the portrait conveys the air of a Joseon dynasty gentleman. The extravagant hat that Go Dong is wearing in this image is a visual marker of upper class distinction. The image conveys a social hierarchy that recasts the artists in the role of the traditional aristocracy. That Go chose to submit this work as his final graduation project in a school at the heart of metropolitan imperial Tokyo suggests an effort to remind viewers of a time when Korea was a sovereign kingdom. He later reminisces, from art school, I would trudge through the streets of Tokyo and keen sorrow and rage fested my bosom, refusing any relief. To friends, I raved about what to do over our country's situation and questioned why I was studying something so carefree as painting. He could have depicted himself in a Western outfit like his teacher Nagahara Kotaro did in his self-portrait that was painted a couple years earlier in 1900. But Go decided to portray himself as a traditional Korean scholar. Go's portrait likely reveals his political stand against the Japanese colonizers who were dressed in Western outfits. Perhaps Go also chose to depict himself as a Korean gentleman to demonstrate his Korean identity. Here's a portrait painted with ink on silk in the traditional style of Korean portraiture. In comparison, Go demonstrates new painting techniques of modeling and shading, if you look at the face, for example, or the clothes. His portrait reveals the effect of a single light source emanating from outside the upper right corner of the picture frame, which contrasts with the use of even light distribution in traditional Korean portraiture as seen on the right. The light yellowish color of Go's background seems to have been painted with the color of silk in mind, which was used in traditional ink on silk portraiture like in the one on the right. Now this is another portrait. Go painted this portrait after returning from his studies in Tokyo to Seoul in the spring of 1915. He depicts himself with short hair and a mustache, clasping a fan with a shelf of books on the left and a framed oil painting just above his head on the right. The books in various shades of burgundy appear to be leather bound and of the sort Ko may have seen his diplomat father reading or that he himself might have consulted while studying French. The white yellow frame of the oil painting is perhaps an allusion to the acclaim Go received from the mainstream Korean press upon his graduation from the Tokyo School of Fine Arts earlier that year. Go is wearing an open, lightweight linen shirt known as Joksam, primarily worn by commoners as either an undergarment or while engaged in some form of manual labor. And in fact, many Koreans who saw artists creating an oil painting for the first time regarded this work, this kind of work as manual labor. Oil painting was seen as a kind of manual labor. The worker's shirt possibly indicates his goes struggle of negotiating his social position in a new world order, torn between the elite position of a traditional amateur painter who would paint in his pastime and a socially lower ranked professional painter who paints for a living. The unbuttoned shirt reveals his bare chest. At this time, the very act of modeling was met with suspicion. Thus, portraying oneself with bare chest was rather unconventional. Kim Guan Ho is known as the first Korean artist who painted and exhibited a nude painting. The painting was displayed in 1916 at the official salon in Japan known as the Taiten. Korean newspapers covered the story but refused to publish a picture of the painting, fearing it would offend the public. In 1916, an image of female nudity in a newspaper was yet unthinkable. 
But by the 1930s, nudes had be been accepted as a primary subject of Western painting, and many nude paintings were featured in the Joseon Art Exhibition, the annual salon sponsored by the Japanese colonial government. In, the early, in conclusion, in the early 20th century, Korean painting transitioned and transformed in direct response to external factors and stimuli beyond its borders. Until recently, the scholarly literature on the colonial period rarely moved beyond the binary scope of oppressor and oppressed. In this lecture, I moved beyond the scope and looked at the artists, the Korean artists' multi-layered experience of colonial reality. I believe that Japanese colonialism was beneficial to the artists and that it facilitated greater access to the metropole of Tokyo, where young Korean students gained artistic inspiration and artistic training. As such, they benefited from Western artistic ideas that had been transmitted principally from Paris to Tokyo by Japanese artists since the late 19th century. Oil painting and Impressionism combined to form a new visual construct, which provided, to this, which provided the space for Korean artists to discover and define their self-identity within the framework of colonialism. <laughs>